Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas here on this over the top beautiful Tuesday, March 6, 2018 and I need to get out and crank up my Craigslist lawnmower to do a little planet nibbling here but before I do I just need to wrap up my uh, weekly doomsday headlines Tuesday morning doomsday headlines which I was halfway through when my battery died um, so I'm just gonna pick up where we left off on our romp through the book of Revelation by opening up today's mainstream media to see uh, a few more ways that this planet is heading into doomsday faster than we thought. 2018 being the year of faster than we thought. Uh, so I'm going to start appropriately enough in where I consider to be the most likely place uh, World War III beginning, which would be the South China Sea uh, that nobody is talking about. I do want to mention one more time that um, in my interview with my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Michael T. Clare, which I will be broadcasting tonight, um, Michael Clare uh, talks more about the South China Sea, but uh, anybody who doesn't understand why Hambone Little Tail believes that this is where World War III is going to erupt, probably faster than we thought, uh, maybe this story will fill in some of the missing blanks. <clears throat> A U.S. aircraft carrier's historic Vietnam port call sends a message to China. For the first time since the Vietnam War, a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier is paying a visit to a Vietnamese port <coughs> seeking to bolster both countries' efforts to stem expansionism by China in the South China Sea. Monday's visit by the USS Carl Vinson, accompanied by a cruiser and a destroyer, brings more than 6,000 U.S. crew members to the area. The visit comes at a time when China is increasing its own military buildup uh, in these islands out there in the South China Sea in maritime territory also claimed by Vietnam, well Vietnam and a bunch of other countries. China <coughs> claims most of the South China Sea and has challenged traditional U.S. naval supremacy in the Western Pacific. Anybody who does not understand what this has to do with Doomsday Obviously, I am uh, fail, have a failure to communicate with you. You know, guys, I can't remember whether this was part of my doomsday predictions for 2018. If it wasn't, it was. I meant it to be. I can't remember whether it made the final cut where I was going to predict. Where I was predicting you were going to start seeing hockey, meaning Europeans start killing African migrants. Uh, that, the, that the tolerance was going to stop and you would see uh, African migrants being gunned down in Europe. I'll have to go back and review my own predictions. But anyway, whether or not I made the prediction, wow! Migrants march angrily in Florence after Italian kills street vendor. African immigrants march through the streets of central Florence late on Monday chanting no more racism 
after an Italian man shot dead a Senegalese street vendor earlier in the day. <clears throat> uh, police said Roberto Perrone had fired six pistol shots at close range, killing Ide Dinak as he sold leather bags, umbrellas, and trinkets on a bridge in the Tuscan city. Um, the shooting came a day after a parliamentary election in which politicians often portrayed African migrants as criminals and called for mass deportations. Anybody uh, not understanding how this story is not going to start being repeated thousands, if not millions of times uh, this year and over the next uh, few years. Uh, a bloodbath is building over there in Europe. Uh, as more and more uh, uh, of these African migrants uh, get their black asses to Honkyville. Uh, I don't blame them. It's exactly what I would be doing. Uh, but we're going to see Honky saying, eh, I don't know about this. And again, we talk about this issue of Michael Clare addressing this very issue. In, the, uh, in his interview that I'm going to publish tonight. But you don't need to go over uh, to Italy to find uh, racism. Let's just go to Alabama. Environmental racism case. Environmental racism. This is a new term for the end times. EPA rejects Alabama town's claim over toxic landfill. Uh, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, reports insufficient evidence that Civil Rights Act was breached in a case of a huge landfill near a mostly African-American town. The EPA has dismissed a civil rights case brought by residents of a small, overwhelmingly African-American town in Alabama who have spent much of the past decade battling a toxic landfill they blame for causing a myriad of physical and mental illnesses. This is Union Town, Alabama where the EPA has green-lighted an enormous landfill site containing four million tons of coal ash to operate near the town. Uh, Union Town has been framed by advocates as one of the most egregious examples of environmental racism in the U.S where a largely poor and black population has had a polluting facility foisted upon it with little redress. And again, you don't have to go to Alabama, just go, just go down here uh, right outside of Houston, Texas, where Honky has just pushed all of this, uh, this planet-eating shit, these nimby, little lily-white rich honkies have just pushed all of this nimby shit onto uh, the, the you-know-whos, uh, the usuals, uh, anybody with darker skin than honky. It's blacks, it's Mexicans, and it's poor whites. It's not skin color, it's how many dollars you have in your wallet. Anyway, from that to good old Monsanto, this will be a fun uh, court case to watch. Monsanto says its pesticides are safe. Now a court wants to see the proof. Uh, this week's uh, trial will mark the first time that the science used to justify 
certain pesticides will be analyzed under oath for all to see. Uh, on Monday, a federal court hearing in San Francisco will turn a public spotlight onto the science surrounding the safety of one of the world's most widely used pesticides, a weed-killing chemical called glyphosate that has been linked to cancer and is commonly found in our food and water, even in our own bodily fluids. Given the broad health and environmental implications tied to the use of this pesticide, we would be well served to pay attention to this case. <coughs> and I will be keeping up with that. Okay, let's look ahead to the U.S. population. This 2050 population projection shows how the United States is falling behind the rest of the world. And what this is talking about is, is, is the, I guess they're calling it bad news that by the year 2050, only one city, which I'm assuming is New York, well, unless New York is underwater, maybe they're not talking about New York. Anyway, they're claiming that it is that it is it is just so sad the mainstream media claiming how it is so sad that by the year 2050 only one of the world's top 20 biggest cities on the planet will be in the US uh, isn't this just awful news uh, as I say, it would be nice if they told what city that was. Now, of course, more and more people are saying New York City will be underwater, as I expect probably, uh, probably at least 10 of the 20 mega cities that they're talking about will very well be underwater uh, by 2050. Okay. As long as we're talking about uh, the definitions of good news and bad news about population projections, according to the mainstream media, we finally have a ray of hope, some good news coming out of none other than Bangladesh. How one country drastically cut its newborn death rate. All right, we have some good news uh, coming out of the United Nations. There were some glimmers of good news in an otherwise grim report released by UNICEF documenting the alarmingly high death rates of newborns worldwide. Bangladesh! has managed to cut its newborn mortality rate from 64.2 deaths per 1,000 live births in 1990 to 20.1 per 1,000 today. That's one in every 50 births. For a country as populous, for a country as populous as Bangladesh, that Success has translated into a staggering number of lives saved. In 1990, 241,000 newborn babies in Bangladesh did not live through their first month. By 2016, that figure was down to 62,000. Of course, that's still an unacceptably high number of deaths and Bangladesh is now in the midst of an effort to bring down its newborn death rate even further. Alright, we have some good news for the planet! Okay, uh, anybody who does not understand the dots between that, uh, that 
headline in this one uh, again uh, obviously uh, I and Michael Clare are having a failure to communicate. <clears throat> Angela Merkel admits that no go zones exist in Germany. Uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel made a major concession to Europe's populist movement this week when she admitted the existence of so-called no-go no zones in Germany. Conservatives and populists have long warned of the existence of such zones as the consequence of a mass Muslim migration from the Middle East and Africa. Uh, such areas are said to be dogged by high levels of crime and are described as no-go zones because outsiders, including police and other authorities, are unable to enter them. Um, anyway, Merkel finally saying, all right, you, uh, them Muslims fighters, I will grant you that. There are a few places in Germany where not even the cops will go. But as long as we're over there in Germany, many uh, versions of this story on the mainstream media. German security service probes acid attack on energy CFO. Uh, Germany's domestic security service is investigating an acid attack on a manager of an energy company that has been in conflict with environmental protesters, police said Monday. Two unidentified males on Sunday hurled acid at the face of Bernard Gunther, chief financial officer with Essen-based company Inogy, uh, a subsidiary of energy giant RWE. And guys, I, I don't want uh, anybody to claim that Hambone Little Tail uh, is encouraging environmental protesters to throw acid in uh, these planet eaters' faces. I, I just simply want to point out, while there's several versions of this story uh, in today's headlines, you will not find one story about the hundreds, if not thousands, of stories of these planet eaters uh, killing uh, environmental activists, although uh, I will say that yesterday there were several stories how an energy executive in uh, Honduras uh, has been charged in the murder of an environmental activist fighting a hydroelectric dam down there. But this is just one example. One planet eater uh, get some acid thrown at him and he's going to be all right it sounds like. That is worthy of many stories in, in the mainstream media while hundreds if not thousands of environmental activists being gunned down by energy executives <clears throat> gets no mention anywhere in the mainstream media. And of course uh, the skyrocketing number of environmentalists being murdered by planet eaters was one of my no shit Sherlock uh, predictions for 2018. All right, let's go over there to Nigeria, try to stifle a yawn. Parts of Nigeria's northeast may be experiencing famine. <clears throat> Areas of northeast Nigeria rendered inaccessible by an Islamist insurgency may be experiencing famine, an aid agency reported. The United Nations estimates that, one, that almost one million people are in hard-to-reach parts 
of the Northeast, where Islamist group Boko Haram has waged an insurgency for the past nine years. Of course, uh, you will not see the word overpopulation anywhere in that story or any other story about famine in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, let's go over to some sweatshop somewhere in Asia. <clears throat> Levi's will use lasers <clears throat> to ethically, ethically create the finishes on all of its jeans. Levi Strauss is introducing a digitizing technique that uses lasers to ethically create designs on its genes in place of manual labor. There you go. So while this, uh, you know, this, isn't this great that this will mean a reduction in the amount of harmful chemicals, they're also, as good news, as good news, in addition to reducing uh, the use of harmful chemicals, the new process will reduce labor-intensive steps in producing genes from between 18 to 24 steps down to just three. There you go. Uh, so, what used to happen traditionally using actual humans uh, for up to 12 minutes, we can now execute with lasers in 90 seconds. So I'm sure the uh, thousands of sweatshop employees being put out of work into their slums might question how ethical uh, Levi Strauss is being by using lasers to ethically uh, make its blue jeans. Guys, this is just one of those headlines <clears throat> from the what could possibly go wrong here from the Techno Utopians. <clears throat> MIT just created living plants that grow like a lamp and could grow glowing trees to replace streetlights. Roads of the future could be lit by glowing trees instead of street lamps thanks to a breakthrough in creating bioluminescent plants. This could solve lots of problems. Moving on. All right, as long as we're over there talking about the techno utopians uh, from glowing trees turning into street lights, uh, we're going to wrap up with three food articles. I don't talk much about food on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. We have this one. I will talk about this more tomorrow. <clears throat> Three versions of this story that I found on today's mainstream media. This macaroni and cheese, this macaroni and cheese helps fight climate change. That was bullshit. Yes. Anyway, two more. Why? I am obsessed with making the most sustainable hamburger possible. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yes. <clears throat> In the lead up to barbecue season, I have become obsessed with making the most sustainable burger possible. If you do not realize this, the main environmental 
impacts of a beef burger are caused by the large amounts of greenhouse gas emissions generated in the production of beef. Well, uh, that's just one of the many reasons that I don't eat beef. So when I go looking for a sustainable uh, burger, I eat a bison burger. A bison burger, an elk burger, a pronghorn antelope burger, or if I'm really desperate, a vegan burger. But we're going to wind up part two with this story, many versions of this story. Baby trying pizza for the first time experiences nirvana. One of the great joys of creating of creating and raising a child is being there to witness them experiencing the many delights our world has to offer. Mm. And who could ever forget uh, witnessing the beauty of a baby's first slice of pizza? Podcaster Jody Avergren uh, captured a picture of his daughter experiencing this important moment in every young girl's life. As you can tell from the photo, the baby looks as if she is experiencing some sort of religious epiphany. Twitter seemed grateful that Avergon and his daughter were there to remind us how to remind us all how we should be enjoying the greatest of humanity's culinary achievements. And if you want to see a photo of the uh, darling young bundles of joy that we are leaving our planet to. Well, I don't know if you can see that photo or not. Here is uh, a picture of a darling bundle of joy eating her first pizza and thinking about her life in the 21st century. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.